We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. It's a really strange morning here on our land. It's been a really stormy couple of days. And yesterday, it was really emotionally draining. We actually dropped what we were doing yesterday and left our land because we saw on Facebook that there was a post about a missing child. And the child had been missing for, by the time that we saw the post, I don't know, 12 hours. So we decided to go out and help with the search as did so many of the local community and it was just amazing to see people were bringing you know tables with food water to help all of the searchers there was police there was drones there was people on horses checking every place that this child could be and it wasn't looking good to be honest this this child who was two and a half had been out overnight in a really strange cold night for this time of year, a really warm day, and also we had torrential downpours. But we did our bit, we went and we searched, and when we got home a couple of hours later, the boy was found, and it was just, it just filled us with joy, it made everything worth it, and you know, it's such a nice thing to live in a place where everyone just rallies together to do everything they can to help this child. So we're a little bit exhausted, but we're ready to get up back on with the plastering. So as Theo said, we spent yesterday helping for the search for the little boy Noah who had gone missing. He was only two and a half years old and they found items of his clothing alongside a river nearby where he lived. They also found little footprints which was heartbreaking to see. It was it was really really sad and, and very scary and the whole time we were looking I was just dreading to think what I might find. Um, so he'd spent all this time outside, it was 36 hours altogether and where they found him I think the GNR said that it would work out in a straight line as a couple of kilometres, but there's no straight line from where he lives to where they found him. So it would have worked out that he's possibly walked 10 kilometres, completely naked, without shoes on, in the rain, in the cold, on his own, through forests, which is just pretty remarkable for a two and a half, two and a half year old boy. But I cannot begin to express the relief that I feel <laughs> and I don't even know this little boy like his parents I'm, I'm so happy for them it's absolutely terrifying and yeah it was just a, a really really nice way to see the community come together even in a horrible circumstance but he was found safe and well from what I read in the newspaper because it's been all over the, the news even over in the UK it was in the news there he's in hospital being treated for dehydration and some cuts and bruises I think um, but other than that it sounds like he's okay which is just fantastic <laughs> massive thank you to all of the suggestions and comments we had on the last video it's pretty overwhelming there were so many to go through we try and read every single comment and there was some really good suggestions and it seemed like you guys really liked the idea of us getting like 
a run around car just to nip to the city and go to the supermarket and keep the old truck as a kind of land workhorse and just to pick up building materials locally you're probably thinking because i saw a lot of comments why do you not just transfer this car this is our vw passat it's a uk registered vehicle over to portuguese plates it's really not that simple they make it incredibly difficult we spoke to someone who deals in that subject and actually we came to the conclusion that it just wasn't possible one we don't have the correct documentation that they require there's lots of hoops to jump through they make it incredibly expensive incredibly difficult and at the end of it we'd have a right hand drive english vehicle that is now portuguese that is in a really bad state because the passat was going to be scrapped back in the uk and we saved it and we brought it over here just so we could use it for a couple of months until we found another vehicle and yeah the the saga continues i don't know what to say really but we've had a we've had a look at loads of different vehicles we've driven to lisbon we've driven all the way around portugal it seems to try and find something and we will find something it's just a matter of time just had an update on the truck actually and it's quite good news I think they're looking for a replacement engine so it's not going to be a brand new engine because that wouldn't make sense for you know a vehicle that's from 1989 but they're trying to look for a similar engine of when it died I guess the communication with the garage is very difficult they don't want to speak to us it's not the preferred garage that we want to take it to but we don't have a choice of where it goes because on top of the price of the vehicle when we brought it we took out a 500 euro warranty for the gearbox and the engine so another suggestion that a lot of you guys had was to go to a cheaper country like germany for vehicles it's a lot cheaper there there's a lot more variety and then bring it back to portugal and import it to a portuguese registration well what they do is they make it so complicated and so expensive it actually makes sense to buy a vehicle in Portugal already which sounds crazy with the cost but what they do is when you import a vehicle they add crazy taxes on so you would end up paying a percentage of the vehicle price brand new so it just doesn't work out at all maybe if you're like a Portuguese car dealer you could work it out and get some good deals but I'm definitely not a Portuguese car dealer so <laughs> I'm just a humble man trying to build my stone house so yeah it's all very complicated and yeah we'll get to the bottom of it but now I'm excited because we're back on the plastering <laughs> just finished wetting the wall down ready for the first layer of plaster on this wall this is exciting because this is going to be our bedroom and it's going to be really cool to see how it transforms once it's fully plastered it's a really warm day and it's even warmer up on the mezzanine so I'm going to need lots of fluid while I'm doing this and I've got to keep wetting the wall down just to make sure there's no shrinkage with the mortar 
I'd like to say a big thank you to Squarespace who have sponsored today's video. If you don't know what Squarespace is, it's a fantastic online platform for you to build and design your very own website. You don't need any web design experience whatsoever. There's a load of different themes to choose from that are completely customizable to you. And I really enjoyed the feature of being able to drag and drop different things onto there that suit your website to a T. For me, I really enjoy searching through the analytics and seeing where people from all over the world have come to check out our website. We also have our podcast hosted on there, blog posts, even a shop. So it's a really great place for us to have everything in one online. If you want to check out Squarespace, we've got a 14 day free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain with Squarespace if you just click the link in our description. Go and check it out and find out just how easy it is to have your own website. Theo is doing the plastering, my job is to be the labourer and make all the mixes and pass him anything he needs so that's what I'm doing right now, it's mixing time. Another task that I do for Theo as his labourer is to keep this water sprayer topped up. This has been a fantastic piece of kit for the plastering, especially because you can choose the water how it comes out, very fine or super firm. It holds about five litres at a time and this is so important when you're plastering to keep the walls moist otherwise it will not stick effectively at all and that's not what you want. You don't want it flying off so all this water that we got earlier we've already gone through I think it's 20 litres we've already gone through 20 litres that includes two mixes now and this will be filled up for the second time so water is so important. Do you want to learn how to do a mix ginge? That'd be great if you could be a labourer because then I could help Theo even more. <laughs> Here's your fresh water. Thank you very much. Oh, this is very hard lifting it. Oh, oh. Go, keep going. I can't keep actually, going. I cannot. Go on. I can't. Surely you can bend for oh. <laughs> that was so oh. hard. That's why we never film that because I just broke all my thumbs. Oh, <laughs> oh that's looking amazing! It is! You can really see the contrast on this little screen as well. <laughs> So I'm back up on the mezzanine and I've got to say this is probably my least favourite place to work because as you just saw it is a bit of a challenge getting everything up and down here because we don't have our stairs in yet but Theo is absolutely crushing it. I was out of the barn for about 10 minutes and he's zoomed along the wall. I hope you can see him behind me working away. This man is a literal workhorse doing such a good job and it's really nice actually to see the walls transforming we're both feeling very excited with the progress that's being made slow and steady wins the race just spotted that Theo's bucket is empty so there's no rest for me you know everyone thinks he's doing all the hard work it's me I'm the one doing all the hard work I'm lifting these buckets up and down well, up and down good. this ladder you are I'll that? be as good as my labourer well yeah that's true and look how fast and effective is working so I would say your labourer is an absolute star <laughs> whoever the labourer is <laughs> this is the route down totally not scary at all um, 
perching on the edge of this mezzanine on a ladder with a bucket and getting up is, is even easier I've got to tell you when this bucket weighs about six stone uh, but the the, uh, <laughs> the mix is downstairs underneath the mezzanine in a wheelbarrow so that's where I'm just going to go and fill up now look at that easy peasy and this right here is the mix it was made by me, so obviously it's the best mix ever. And uh, I'd say each one of these wheelbarrows, for some reason I can't remember the name today, each wheelbarrow full, I get about three full buckets here. You just literally slop it in, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And then when I've got the third bucket full, I then go and do another mix. So that's the ratio, that's, that's the best kind of um, method that we found I'd say for sure but yeah look at that that is just perfection absolute perfection whoever made this mix was an absolute legend so I've contradicted myself the, that actually looks like there's still loads of mix left <laughs> I reckon we're gonna get four buckets out of this mix which is great so Theo there's a lot of mix left for you I hope you're happy yeah. and now I'm just gonna carry it Plaster master. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh. I have just finished plastering for today. I've done just over halfway on the top wall on the mezzanine. I'm super stoked with how it looks. I didn't start till 3 p.m. because there was like torrential horizontal rain and we couldn't actually do a mix to get it in here but I'm constantly learning as well like I'm figuring out like different mixes that go on better liaising with B, my super assistant best assistant ever <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it's looking good I'm gonna scratch it off in a minute and this stone here is actually the original uh, stone that the ridge beam sat on That's so you so can cool. see how much we've actually added onto this roof and made it a really usable house and uh, I've been using this little trowel for the whole the whole time your favorite tool of all time it is I think once once the wall gets smoother and smoother and less kind of uh, I don't know what would you say kind of like less bumpy yeah and there's not so much um, distance between each stone and having to fill in with the mortar and then I can use a bigger one but this smaller one's perfect because it allows me to go over them bumps and really go with the flow of the wall it looks fab so yeah I'm, I'm stoked it's uh, it's coming along happy Friday <laughs> and my little assistant where's your mask? you should be wearing one no, no baby Just wait till your scratcher arrives. Can't wait. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's so sad as well having to scratch it all when I've tried so hard to actually make it flattish. It looks absolutely fab, and I'm not just saying that to boost your confidence, but it really does look great. Look at that compared to that. I can't wait for it all to be like that. It's just so exciting.
turned into a really lovely evening. There was a storm rolling through, the sky got very dark, thunder, lightning, rain, and now it's all past and the sky is a gorgeous colour, the birds are singing and the sun is setting. And it's been a really fantastic day. I did just <laughs> fall out of the caravan like an absolute fool and my ankle is now hurting, but it's totally fine. So I think I'm gonna end the vlog there before I hurt myself anymore. <laughs> Super accident prone today. I've hurt myself about 10 times. It's just one of those days. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you on the next video.